Hi everyone, this is Ryan on the Syntax Byte, and in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, import MySQL tables into Excel um, using a query. So there's a little bit of setup involved for this, um, but it's quite easy to do once you have the appropriate driver installed. So the first thing you'll want to do is uh, install the ODBC connector for MySQL for Windows. Um, it's quite a simple small little install uh, but the key is really to make sure that you match up the type of the driver um, the architecture of the driver with the architecture of your Excel install rather than the architecture of your operating system so in my case I'm on a 64-bit machine uh, but my Excel is 32-bit and I can verify that by going to file uh, account click about Excel and it says 32-bit up here so if yours says 64-bit make sure you download the 64-bit driver otherwise even if you're on a 64-bit uh, a system then you want to actually download the 32-bit driver otherwise you'll get an error um, when you try and connect with the connector in Excel so if you're getting an error regarding the system architecture make sure those are lined up so in my case, I had the 32-bit. I've already had it installed, but you just go here, Windows 32-bit installer. And of course, if you did have 64-bit, it's there. Download it and just run through the install. It's a super simple, typical program install. Once you've got it installed, what you want to do is you want to go ODBC data sources. Again, you want to line up the 32-bit if you installed the 32-bit driver or the 64-bit if you installed the 64-bit driver. So in my case, again, 64-bit system 32-bit driver 32-bit excel so i'm going to open the 32-bit so once you get this open you'll see existing user data sources and then any system data sources if you have them what we're going to do is we're going to add a new one here and then it will actually show up in excel later uh, when we go to create the query and to check to see if you have the driver installed you just click drivers and you should find it in the list so it's mysql odbc there's an ansi and a unicode um, either should should probably work fine if you need Unicode support make sure you use the Unicode one so then we can go to add um, and the drivers by the way is specific to the architecture again so if you installed the driver and you don't see it listed there try opening 64-bit um, and then you know if you see it there then you know um, yeah so you just have to match up the architecture of this window again with the architecture of the driver with the architecture of your Excel but not the architecture of your system okay so once you go to create a new data source you can select it I'm gonna select the Unicode driver might as well then you can go ahead and um, add in uh, a name so I'm gonna do MySQL local and then I'll give it a description local MySQL server hosted on WSL, that's Windows Subsystem for Linux. It's 127.0.0.1. 3306 is fine for the port. Ryan, Ryan. Uh, and then it will give you a database drop down. This is pretty much how you know it's working. I'm not going to select a particular database, and we'll have the option to select it in, in, in Excel instead in, in that way. You can click test and make sure that the connection is successful, and then click OK and that will get you all set up there um, for that one so then you click OK so the table we're gonna be importing I have it here we actually brought it into Excel or sorry into my SQL from an Excel file in a previous video um, now I wanna bring it back into Excel and this time we're gonna use a query so we did some Python stuff to get it into a SQL database but now we're gonna use a query so uh, it's just a simple row of con like table of contacts basically it should import really really nicely into Excel so now we can go over to Excel and go to data get data we'll do from other sources and then do from ODBC wait for that to load and then here you can see it's the names of those um, data sources that we had in that other window so just select MySQL local, that's what we called it. Click OK. 
It pops us up with this authentication prompting a username and password. We can actually just go default or custom and it doesn't specify any credentials because we specified our credentials in that other window earlier uh, when we actually created the connection. So we don't need to specify anything here. Everything's already kind of set up for us. Click connect and it pops up. And so here we can actually choose the databases again that we want to work with and then we can choose the table that we want to work with. So I want to work with people. Um, I could load this in straight away. You can also do a transform data. So that's perfect. So you can make any modifications here. So maybe for our Excel sheet, we actually want to merge these two columns. Um, so we could do something like that, right? Where we're going to use a separator, we're going to use a space. New column name is going to be just name. Perfect. And then so there's our, looks like it's actually a double space. So there must have been a space there at one point. So that's kind of unfortunate. We can actually just undo that. This is something really cool about this. So you can just quickly undo it and then just redo it. And I'll use no separator. Perfect. That looks better. So then every time on, we can actually edit this because I made a mistake on the name. So I'm just kind of showing you guys how powerful this query editor is too. So instead of calling it merge, we want to call it name, right? Go OK, and now that changes that to name. So now that our names column is merged, you could of course do it after an Excel, but the advantage with this is if you refresh the query later for new data, it will still make these changes. So that's really, really cool. And then just go close and load. And then we have our table in Excel and we've made those changes. Um, so that's perfect. That's basically all there is to it. You can hit refresh. It will refresh it from the database. Um, you can always go to properties and configure auto refresh as well. Enable background refresh. Choose to refresh the data automatically when opening the file. And that's basically it. You're done. Um, so the biggest trick is really just making sure that you line up the architecture of your Excel the architecture of the driver and the architecture of that window that you put in um, the connection to. Once you've got that all set up, it's really just as simple as picking it, picking the table you want and bringing it straight into Excel. I hope the video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Like, comment and subscribe if this was helpful.